w- w- at what age did you initially get involved in gang banging? Because I I do feel like we like you said it's it's still around, but in it, when you were growing up, it was kind of. It was. It was. It was new. It was the, it, 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 well, I'm saying it was new to the world. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like the Crips and Blood shit was something that was be- starting to become like a mainstream thing. But it, but now we all know what Crips and Bloods are, right? I mean, as a young kid, I was naive to it. I mean, I lived in the center of it and didn't know shit about it. As a as a fucking five, six, seven year old kid, right. All I knew was sun, Saturday morning cartoons, riding my bike up and down the street and not knowing that the dudes right down the block was claiming shit and mm-hmm. selling drugs. And I was naive to it. But as you grow and you start seeing and you start adapting to your environment and you seeing the dudes hanging on the corners and dudes your age riding right. around in, in fancy cars and, and whatever. So my introduction to that was around, you know, 12, 13 years old. When what, I, what year was this? Shit, this had to be like 85, 86. Okay. You know, it was treacherous around. You know, I was go. I would go to the bus stop getting ready to go to school, and then I started getting introduced to niggas sweating you and shit. I didn't know right. what the fuck that was like, about. What is this? I'm sitting at the bus stop you, getting ready to go to school, and it's like, nigga, where the fuck you from? And what you doing over yeah. here? And why you got that on? And what you wearing that hat for? And why you got that? And then I'm looking like... God damn, this is, and that was the reality of it. So the, and as at that age, it's funny because before that, I dealt with none of that. Mm-hmm. But then once, once you, you be, start to look like you once might you be hit the, growing you a little light, bit, once you hit that age, next, it's just like a common thing. Mm-hmm. You either getting sweated or you sweating a motherfucker or y'all jumping out on motherfuckers. And that's, like I said, it was the product of my environment is, is what I adapted to when I was able to understand and know what gang banging was about and trying to grow up in a section and trying to protect your section and represent and it's about you and the homies and whatever. So it was a transition, I think, growing up on the West and being in that environment. Because if I probably grew up somewhere else, it'd probably been a different thing. Do you think that you having to deal with that shit where people would bang on you or or sweat you, like you said, like did that kind of force you to like figure out like I need to I need to have something to say? Well, yeah. I mean, you either going to get down or lay down at that aspect. So it's either you going to belong you going to belong to something and represent something or you going to be a motherfucker out there who's probably going to end up at the like belly of the beast because there was no saving. I don't give a fuck. You could say you wasn't from nowhere and then the motherfucker sweats you harder. So it's best to belong than to not and get caught up in a world of bullshit that you can't handle. So that was my thing about, you know, the gang banging shit and, and claiming the hood or, or getting courted in or whatever. It was the sense of feeling like I belonged and represented. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had 15, 20, 30 other niggas who was representing and we all for the protection of whatever. And if niggas didn't like it, then we handle that accordingly to why we did it. But like I said, I think it's, it's not a choice. It's being in a situation in an environment that we grew up in. It's like, that's what you did. Yeah. It's funny because I just had this conversation with somebody. I had a cousin who did like 15 years in prison. Right. Right. Uh, I have two cousins. One of them is half Mexican, half white. He's in the Mexican mafia. My other cousin, who who actually passed away in prison recently, um, not a racist guy, big hip hop head, but literally was in for twenty years and mm. it, it had he joined the Aryan Nation. It's a survival thing. It's like definitely. It's like you know. I remember he got out for a couple of years, and I took him to a Busta Rhymes concert, and he, it was like the best night of his life. But this motherfucker. I like you got to wear long sleeve shirts, bro. Yeah, definitely. but like you said, it's like yo, it's what you're. It's, it's like you got to adapt. You have to get adapt. down or lay down. I mean, you have to adapt to certain situations that we're put in, especially if you one of those young young men mm-hmm. who grow who grew up or got tossed in a situation to where it's either going you either a part of this and gonna belong or you gonna represent and you gonna up you gonna uphold this shit to the best of your ability or you gonna be like I said you gonna be a sheep to the lions. What are your thoughts on on now cuz I do feel like it's just interesting that like there's people who move to LA 
like artists will move to LA and then, you know, all of a sudden they're affiliated with certain sets and, and, and they got big homies. And I, I, I don't know how, like, you know, there's like R and B singers and shit that are like banging like hard as fuck. And it's like, wait a minute. Like, you know, like what are your thoughts on kind of how, how gang banging has evolved currently? Because I do feel like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, like like there's a lot of faces to certain you know sets that are like they you know, that aren't from here per right. se. You know what I'm saying? Well, I take it. That I look at that as a lot of people get into situations to where they feel like it's just like if a dude joined the Cub Scouts or went out and joined the football team or whatever. The aspect of that is to toughen up or make you uh, seem like, you know, you protected or being something that you ain't. Some dudes have to adapt to that situation. Some dudes have to feel like, you know, that's my that, that's my foundation of what I've seen or what I've wanted to become. Uh, if for, for dudes like me who grew up here and first witnessed gang banging and done. grew up in it there was a certain way and code that you belonged or you got put on a neighborhood you know the the new days quote of gang banging is to each his own to is what i say it's what is accepted and what ain't accepted from whatever gang feels like this is what they do I mean, I don't know, sometimes it might be a popularity contest or it might be a, hey, I've always wanted to be a part, so is it a backward step? To me, I think it is, but like I said, some dudes is to each his own and they feel like that they have to have that, that background to make them official, you feel me? So I don't really speak on it because then we don't want to get entangled in the situation of telling people that they not original or whatever, because right. if you feel that's you, that's you. Myself, I know the certain codes coming from Compton at 12, 13 years old, knowing what it took or what it, what had to be done to be initiated into a gang as to nowadays it's just like, Hey, you're down, you down, show us love, on show us bring, love. Bring the homies around the city, and it's all good. So <laughs> it's different codes. Like I said, different times. I mean, gangbanging is commercialized now. Is, yeah. Back in my days when we didn't glorify it. I mean, people knew where we were from, what we represented, but there was no way in fuck. Sony, yeah, I feel like once the 90s hit, yeah. it became like, I remember when there was the Crips verse, or the Crips and Bloods album, Banging on Wax. Right. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. It, it started to become commercialized because record labels looked at it as as a promotional tool to sell yeah. records. I mean, honestly, we couldn't do that shit back in my days. When I got signed to Sony and I was on Epic Records, the home of Michael Jackson and Charday, no way in fuck you finna put bandanas on a video right. and you finna be on a record talking about you a crip from so-and-so. The way we did it is we did it with our color symbolizations or niggas will wear blue in their videos, the bloods will wear red in their videos, and we left it at that. Now that record labels see that it's influenced by our shit, so he's saying he this, now you got a million fans who buying this product because he represent what we not going to stop that. I mean, claim whatever you want to. You want more blue bandanas? You want more red bandanas? Get them. The more, the merrier, because it's now commercialized and people ain't scared of the situation no more. Not to say gang banging ain't official, but like I said, back in our days, motherfuckers had security in the lobbies of record labels because they were scared of niggas walking in them. Now you like bring all your crew in. Shit, you get so it, it's just the way that motherfuckers have monetized it and made it to where we can put it on film. You can claim it, and then there it is. Fuck it. As long as we making a dollar off of it, we don't really. We're not intimidated. Way, if someone, if someone in your entourage, we'll turn the other cheek. We'll turn yeah, the other crazy. cheek. Yes. 